Ever since Roswell, America has been fixated with the possibility of alien life secretly visiting Earth from their home star in a galaxy far, far away. There are literally mountains of witness testimonies from people who claim to have had contact and or a close encounter of many kinds with what they claim were extraterrestrial beings. However, regardless of the incredible curiosity and the reams of supposed whistleblowers surrounding military bases like that of Groom Lake's Area 51, secret bases on the moon, and, of course, witness testimonies, all claim to have been experienced by millions. Yet solid evidence for the existence of extraterrestrial life seemingly eludes us all to this day. Or does it? Many people refuse to accept the reality that we have, for many years, been actively observed by an intelligent life form not of this world. But without any concrete admittance by the powers that be, Many people will not even consider such possibilities, long denied by their government. This, regardless of the many more intriguing sightings, along with the most incredible of footage. It is simply not enough for this major shift in acceptance, without the gatekeepers of paradigm's permittance. However, hopefully, the following information may persuade some of them to reconsider. To not follow in blind faith a governance that is seemingly withholding that which is deserved by all, the truth. In 2004, several Navy officers who witnessed what has since become known as the Nimitz UFO encounter have come forward with an astonishing claim. Like something straight out of a Man in Black movie, the officers say that unknown yet highly unusual and incredibly high-ranking individuals appeared at their location shortly after the event. These mysterious figures then ordered the confiscation of all data recordings and videos pertaining to the event. During the November of 2004, a Navy missile cruiser anchored around 100 miles off the coast of Southern California detected strange radar signals radiating from an unknown craft. The officers claimed that the signals were erratic, yet clearly of an artificial nature. They could not identify the signal's intended message, due to them never having encountered such a signal before. It didn't strangely match any given off by any known modern aircraft. Jet fighters were subsequently deployed to the UFO's location. These fighters buzzed the craft, successfully capturing footage and telemetry of the unknown object. One of the jets in particular succeeded in recording substantial, compelling, and as yet unexplained maneuvers. In 2017, the government released a number of recordings of the encounter. To the public, however, it seems that this so-called disclosure was anything but. Five Navy veterans recently spoke to the popular mechanics franchise, where they subsequently dropped this bombshell. They told all regarding what they experienced at the time. Having all been part of the Navy's Strike Carrier Group 11, they were sailing on the USS Princeton when the encounter occurred. After detecting the object, the men successfully captured footage of the UFO's incredible capabilities. The object would quickly change altitudes, sometimes lurking 80,000 feet nearly instantaneously. The UFO became known as Tic Tac because of its shape. Yet, due to this confiscation of data by this unknown group, who not only had they never heard of, but seemed to carry near limitless superiority of the military operations, they rarely spoke of the incident. They further claimed that the so-called Tic Tac gave off a phosphorus glow at night and would dart around in various directions, said one of the veterans, Gary Voorhees, who looked at the object through binoculars on the ship. Why did men in black take control of the data surrounding this UFO? What is it that they are hiding? Was Tic Tac a real UFO, built and sent here by an ancient civilization in another galaxy? We find the details surrounding this encounter highly compelling. There is a very interesting patent recently acquired by the U.S. Navy, one with the potential capabilities to fulfill or rather stage a conspiracy theory, which has circled the web and books alike for decades. That being a false flag alien invasion, 
What's more, this patent also includes a technology that could amplify a voice over a vast distance, as if one were hearing the voice of God himself. It is a laser technology, whose invention, release, and patent all made under the possible guise or actual real-world advantageous purposes in its military applications, it creates a heat-seeking deterrent, or more specifically, a holographic craft, not only derailing said heat-seeking missiles, but could also explain many of the recent military UFO sightings, as this technology has potential only limited by the projectable power of the technology itself. Anything could seemingly appear in the sky as if real. If you add to this the ability to convey a voice over a vast distance, this technology could indeed be used to create a mass false flag incident, in particular a mass UFO sighting, or an attempt to fake a rapture within religious sects. The nefarious possible uses of this technology is wide-ranging. Yet one saving grace is the U.S. Navy's declaration of the ownership of such technologies, a move we find somewhat reassuring. Yet, as always, this new patent is not the only reason for the creation of our video today. For although many, if not all UFO sightings now, can be written off as a possible holographic operation, it does not explain their presence within ancient art. The testimonies and compelling evidence put forth by remote tribes, most notably the Dogons, and their reoccurrence and claim visitation of Earth throughout history, even into the Renaissance, present within certain masterpieces, not to mention the curious illustrations made in the stones of Mesoamerica, all of which predate this technology by centuries, and in some cases millennia. Thus, the question remains. Are we alone? A question which we find highly compelling.